Hi, yeah, I'm Lizzie. I'm in my first year of my astronomy PhD, but like Chris and Tarufa, I also did my four-year undergrad here. And like Tarufa, I also start, started on the three-year and changed to the four-year. Um, so, been here way longer than planned, but there you go. Um, so, my talk is a little bit different from everyone else's. Everyone else has talked about Nottingham. I'm talking about what I did as an opportunity that I got through the staff here, which is I went and worked in an observatory in Sydney for three months, a couple of summers ago, 2016. So, yeah, how did I get it? Um, I heard about this through an email from the department, actually from my now PhD supervisor. He sent out this email going, this is a really cool internship in Australia, people should go for it. And I looked at it and got really excited. I was in my second year and thought, yeah, I'll go do this. Read through all their application thing at the bottom, it says, you need research experience. And my research experience at that point was second year labs, where you kind of hope things work, and most of the time they don't, and you just hope they don't explode. It's mostly second year labs. So I just kind of went, hmm, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to apply for it and just get rejected. So I just went, I applied. I got a summer camps job for that year. But then I actually got an email through someone um, who taught me in second year labs going, I liked your lab report. Come work for me in my lab. I'm not going to pay you, but basically come be a dog's body. So I did that. I did five weeks in the same kind of labs that Chris works in, being a complete dog's body. I put up a shelf genuinely at one point in that internship. Um, but, you know, it was really good research experience. I learned that the lab environment, the PhD environment, was something I was really interested in going into. Um, but when I got into my third year, I thought I actually need to do something proper this summer, like a proper internship where they're going to pay me. Um, so I thought, I'm going to go abroad, because why not? Um, so I applied for this internship and about seven others. And this is the application form for the one I ended up getting, um, which was actually my top choice the whole way through. Slightly terrifying, like it's a six-page document about your CV and why you're amazing and please come employ me and it's terrifying to write. Um, but, you know, I did. Um, I got this one. I got none of the others, including here. <laughs> um, just like to point that out, that they rejected me. Um, but I got this one. Um, so this is me at the observatory. So it's the Australian Astronomical Observatory, which is really difficult to say, so I'm just going to call it the AAO for the rest of the time. Um, and, yeah, I'm really glad this is the one I got. So what did I do? Um, on my application form, I'd kind of talked a whole lot about how much I liked coding and how much that was something I'd got really comfortable with through my degree, because um, they teach you really well here. Um, so they gave me kind of a hell of a coding challenge. So this is an instrument on the AAT, which is the Anglo-Australian Telescope, which is one of the telescopes they run. Um, it's called um, 2DF, which is two degree field, and it has 400 fibers that can look at 400 different objects on the sky at the same time. The idea about this is that you have all 400 fibers looking at things, and it takes about 40 minutes for the robot to configure this field and the telescope to flip and everything. And what they wanted was a system that would basically go, if a supernova goes off, we want to look at it within 10 minutes. So you're going to just move one fiber, and you're going to get calibration information and object information. Go write the code. Um, so that was slightly terrifying. But I did get the code written. I finished it six weeks into my 12-week internship. Um, which meant I got to see it integrated into the whole telescope control. I got to run sky tests. Um, but this is one screen on four screens worth of telescope control. And if you press that button, it runs my code on a telescope and it doesn't break it. Um, so that was really exciting. I got to do some sky tests while I was there. But unfortunately, the night we did it, it was cloudy. So we kind of put the code in, had chosen two stars to go test that both things were definitely looking, both fibers were definitely looking at the right ones. Um, Set it all up, press go, telescope went wee, looked that way, and we went, great. We have no idea what it's looking at, because it's all cloudy. So I had to go home at that point, which was seriously disappointing, because I had no idea if this code works, and I was terrified that it was going to be completely wrong, and they were going to go look back through my code and realize I was awful and all the code was rubbish. Uh, but luckily, that didn't happen. Um, I got an email from my supervisor while I was sitting where you are currently sitting in a gravity lecture in my fourth year. Get, basically got an email going, oh my god, it works! We looked at two stars and it works. So I sat and tried to pay attention and failed epically for the rest of that lecture. Um, but this is where you can go on their website that means you can apply for my time. So actual astronomers apply to do things with my code, which I guess I now am an actual astronomer. But at the time it was more exciting. Um, so I kind of went, yeah, that's probably the end of it. I'm probably not going to hear anything else. Um, but I was wrong. So in August this year, my supervisor sent an email out to the entirety of the department at the AO saying, we tested the target opportunity code, it works, we can't tell you what it happened. We can't tell you what we did it on. So he did actually email me and tell me what he did it on, but I couldn't tell anybody. Well, I did tell my parents, but they didn't tell anyone else um, that, yeah, what it worked on. So I could then tell people uh, a test release, 
and it was something I hope most of you guys who are looking to study physics heard about. So there was a gravitational wave event where they um, saw an electromagnetic counterpart, and one of my code, my code was on the ones that saw the electromagnetic counterpart of that. So I got my name on a paper. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> every week. She does it every week. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's my name on a paper. Um, my supervisor didn't tell me I was on this paper until the morning of the press release, and then he only told me two weeks ago that I'm actually on the main paper as well, but I had no idea. Um, so there you go, two papers. Um, yeah, so I said I finished my thing six weeks into my 12-week internship. They were paying me to be there for 12 weeks, um, so I kind of had to find something to do. So I went and talked to the woman who ran all the outreach for the AAO and said, I'm really interested in doing something. Is there anything I can do? Because I'm bored. Um, so I did a Twitter session um, where I basically, it was meant to be a question and answer session. We mostly just talked at the universe about what we'd done because no one wanted to ask us any questions. Um, but me and one other student fellow there did, the, did this and talked about what we'd done to try and encourage people to apply for it. Um, I wrote this blog post for basically the same reasons. Um, I wrote an article in their um, magazine about everything I'd done. I've since then written a blog for the UON physics blog um, about all the gravitational wave side of things. And yeah, I was in Australia. I uh, didn't spend the whole time in an air-conditioned office. Um, so I stayed in some really quite questionable student accommodation um, with uh, people from all walks of life. This is just some of my friends from there. They're doing like psychology internships and law internships and studying out there. Although if they were studying out there, I have no idea why they were staying in that accommodation for all that time. Um, I went out and saw the actual telescopes. So the observatory is based in Sydney, but the actual telescopes are about 600 miles out of Sydney, which is, you know, a day trip in Australian terms, um, which is very strange. Um, but it was beautiful. So the Southern Hemisphere, like Hannah was saying, it's just absolutely incredible. And we had beautiful clear skies, as you can see in that picture, and you can just see the whole Milky Way. And it's in the middle of a dark skies park, so like, there's no light at all, and it's just the best. It's the best. Um, that was my moment of, yes, I want to be an astronomer. Um, and yeah, I was in Australia. You can't go to Australia and not hold a koala. Um, so this is the embarrassing part of the talk because I went to Australia when I was 11 with my parents and I had this photo taken. <laughs> and it's worryingly similar. <laughs> what I didn't realise at the time is I was even wearing the same colour top <laughs> as I was in the original. Um, so yes, that's the embarrassing. I have not changed in 11 years. Um, <laughs> So basically, it was an absolutely incredible experience. I would not have heard about it if it wasn't for the staff here. They kind of bombard you with emails in January of like, apply for this internship, apply for this one, apply for this one. And you kind of have to find the one that is like actually something you want to do. Um, yeah, help me learn I was capable of so much more than I thought I was. I think that's just true for my entire university experience. If you told me at A-levels that I would stand in front of this audience, give this talk every week, have it filmed um, to go online, I'd have told you not to be so ridiculous because I run and hide and cry at the back of classrooms when they ask me to do presentations, like genuinely. Um, so I'm definitely more confident than I was when I started. And yeah, like Charifa said earlier, take every opportunity offered to you because this university like chucks everything at you, um, but it's up to you to seize it, otherwise you're kind of wasting your time. But yeah, thank you very much.